Hello there, this is Kisu102 and this is Cafe Rouge, Chapter 5. So, yeah, this time it seems it's gonna be about candies. And let's go. I could hear them coming closer and closer, louder and louder. Every once in a while I look over my shoulder, glancing cautiously at my surroundings. I sped up my pace. The hand covered my mouth completely. In my quick thinking, I jerked my knee up behind me. It hit him, square in the nuts. He recoiled in pain, releasing me, and I made a run for it down the streets. I ran to Balance Street. I didn't know where else to go. It was the only place I could think of. Balin, Balin! I ran his door doorbell, knocking on his door frantically. At least it opened. This is what are you doing here? Art I swept my arms around him, shaking. Balin looked startled and hesitantly wrapped his arms around me. It's okay, it's okay. No, someone's following me. What? Mr Mrs. Michaels is stepping to the light, her shadow towering over the pot of us. Her countenance was frightening, like a dragon disturbed from her sleep. <laughs> she uses that dresses at home. Darling, what are you doing here in the cold? Come inside, dear. It's warmer. And I still don't trust you, Miss Michaels. Hey, you. And that's how you ended up here. Yeah. Holding up the cut of cocoa, cocoa, cocoa. In my hands, I took little sips now and then. Mrs. Michaels left the minute I came in, saying she'll be back in just a minute or two. But it's been an hour already. I wonder when she'll be back, or even why she went out. Bell, tell me, what, what time is it now? I'm pretty late, 11 ish at night? Or now you don't even have no time to finish my homework. We wait for a while, well, with Bell trying to conform me, playing tennis on the sea. The Z <laughs> with him, and then the door opened. I'm home, dears. Back already with the same dress. Mrs. Michaels shot her son a fiendish look. Balin sighed, tugging his grip on my hand. She erased that look on her face and immediately put on a smile. Is this darling? Would you prefer to stay here at? <laughs> what am I doing an English accent? Here tonight. You're welcome to sleep over if you want to. Um, no. It's fine, Mrs. Michaels. I think I should go home. She looked terribly disappointed. Oh, what a shame, dear. Balin, walk her home. <laughs> yeah, Balin, be my dog. You don't have to if you don't want Ball. I'm fine with my own already. No, no, I, I do, I do. It's just... 
well, just don't just stand there. Walk her home and don't come back late. She dragged her son off the couch, almost pushing him on top of me. Bell and flushing got off me quickly. Don't worry, my dear. Everything's safe now. You can be at ease. All right. Anyway, I have Balan with me, so it's just like vampire versus vampire. I think it's more of a blood thing. Yeah, I think. We arrived at my house soon enough. I'll see you tomorrow at school. He's blushing. Yeah, I'll see ya. <laughs> I don't have comments on that. Another day of school, huh? My hands reach over the bedside table. Yeah. I'm sorry. I searched my bed, my desk, under the bed, under the desk, and entire room. This can't be happening. Oh, ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Got a little bit at the cafe. What if I drop it last night while running? No, the guy took it. The guy took it. I crawled up from under my desk only to hit myself against a hardwood piece of furniture. Ow. Oh, I couldn't worry about it. I needed to hit the school. Yeah, the guy took it. I think it was on purpose, actually. Because, I don't know. Those kind of things happen. And the harp seems like very, very important. Also, it's, it's the same sign as the cafe, at the cafe. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, another day of work, huh? <sighs> Hopefully, I can find my necklace. You will not. You will definitely not. Oh god, we are lost again, right? Yeah, we are. Yes, we are indeed. <sighs> okay. Oh, there you are. Okay, fine. I'll try to remember that. I'll really, really try to remember that. I'm not gonna be able to, but I'm gonna try. I already forgot. Special things happening. The kitchen was a clean affair, except for Aldo and I. And the hundreds of unclean dishes and pans stuck up in a heavy pile in a far corner. Uh, should I clean up or should I help Aldo? Why is there like a lot of work or something? I'm gonna think that there is not much work because they're just Aldo and I in the kitchen. So I'm gonna clean up. Yeah. I might as well. Slipping on my apron, I get rid of this girl. It's a group as a sponge. Oh, what? Come on, Ari. Just a little bit. One more round. No, can you just leave me alone, Damien? Two men came in, knocking over the pile of dishes and pans, and everything came tumble down on me. I ducked my head close in my ass. One shoe bang hit my back. Ouch! And bomb onto my head. Ugh! Fine, you still owe me 50 bucks, though. Gambling. I shoved a pile of dirty dish debris off me, shooting a glare at the main culprit. Damien continued to laugh till he caught my eye. Oh, hi, didn't see you there. Uh, uh. There's not like. There's not an option that says forget about it and just go with your work. No, there isn't. Why there is not? I don't even know. So the most this. I burst my leg and him. Then we walk off leaving through the back door to the stairwell. Hello, Aldo. I can read that. When I start the señorita, <laughs> can I help with anything today? He paused, setting down the butcher knife. I thought you were Italian. Is it the same in Italian? I don't know. Looking around the corner, he scratches nothing. Arms, well, I'm missing some ingredients. Vegetable oil, butter. Could you go get them? Yes, sir. I'll go get the oil. Yeah. I ran over to the kitchen, getting myself in there by my bun. Where is the oil? Why is this kitchen so messy? Unless I found it. Got it all done. Bravo, what a basic one. And you put it in here. I'm gonna place it next to the stove. With nothing else to do, I lock over all the shoulder. Uh, but wait, what are you doing? Just uh, cooking? Yes, cooking. Nothing else? Just cooking? Ha 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 strange. Why was all the like this? Is he trying to help? He's doing a mold up. Almost later, the kitchen doors creak open. Diane, step inside. Can anyone give me a half on the stage? Just one person is enough. Not enough. Eagerly volunteer. I can, I can. Thank you, darling. I am. 
My fingers fumble with the wiring of the microphone system. Uh, could you um, repeat that again, Diane? I'm, I'm still confused. Oh, don't worry, here, let me show you. Tomorrow night was one of the rare nights uh, the cafe hosted a jazz show. Oh, that's nice. A big name band coming over a performance here on Cafe Rose stage. Diane wants me to help her set up the electrical equipment. Oh, sorry. They're perfect. Testing, testing. My voice echoed through the dining hall and stage arena. Yup, the microphones were working. Oh, I forgot one more thing. We need some cords. Gotta fix some table decks? Could you look for some in Antoine's office? Sure. Oh god, I hate that guy. But maybe Chris has some too at the bar. After all, he is a banter. He must have limbs of our cards for all the wine bottles he's opened. I'll go look for Chris. I hate Anton. Chris! Silence so stretched across the room bar in the counter. Was Chris really not here? I waited another 5 or 10 minutes. Oh, I guess we'll go back empty handed then. What? What? Sorry, Jan, I couldn't get anything. I guess the customers can sit with uneven tables. It's fine here. She put my shoulder restrained. Let's have a toast. I'll go get the greens. Do a job well done. That is gonna bring me trouble. That is gonna so it, it is bringing me trouble. It is definitely. Hours pass. Diana, Diane, and I continue to work on the stage, putting the tag equipment. Could you bring the empty glasses to the bar? Chris can clean them. Oh sure. But Chris wasn't at the bar. Well, maybe I could just flip them and kill it. They'll be it. He's gonna be there, like gonna get there. Oh my God, where's this dirty glasses? That would be funny. I want to see that. The ribbon at the bar is smiling in quite surprise at who arrives. Chris! I can still ask for him for the quirks, but I'm not gonna do it. Hey, is this? He was cleaning the bar counter with rather greasy looking towel. How are you? Did you see all day today yet? Haha. <laughs> oh, you should visit the bar more often. I'm here all day, every day. You liar. You liar. Strange. I didn't see you earlier when I came. Chris blinked. Of course I was. I might have been in the bathroom for 50 minutes. You might have missed me. I see. I love you, Chris. I love you. I said the empty glasses on the counter. I am so disappointed right now. Diane asked me to bring over these to clean. Sure, sure. Just leave them. Chris set the towel aside, taking the glasses one by one. Oh, and I'll look out for you. Not sure what he wanted. Could you go to the kitchen? That's where he said for you to go. Okay, sure. No problem. As I walked away, I couldn't have a look back. I could have sworn he came just now. He did. He definitely did. There, there's no question in that. Making my way to the kitchen, I waved my hands at my two co-workers. Diane and the redhead. Hi, Diane. Adeline. <laughs> Alright. Hello. Pleasant to see you again. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Did you drop off the glasses? Yep. And now Aldo needs me. Oh, pish posh. You're always in the kitchen. I'll go help Aldo instead. Who's... You're so... Whoa! Nonsense. By all means, let me. You should have Diane with the tables. I heard... You've been a huge help. Oh, I gotta get go the corks. You're right. I could. I told you I couldn't get the corks, but I didn't. But in my head, Adeline smiled and she woke off. She really is a sweetheart, isn't she? Yeah, Adeline's really nice. I'm like Candice. Speaking of which, where is she? By the way, where's Can? All right, that was perfect timing. <laughs> that really shaked me up. Diane and I exchanged stupefying looks. We were both paralyzed for a few minutes. At last, our eyes blinked and we felt our locks breathing again. What was that? So it was like it came from the kitchen. Our eyes met mine one last time. We headed to the kitchen! <laughs> Maybe Aldo's was on fire again. Hello? Aldo? Oh, the stub was on fire. And the smoke everywhere. Oh man, I guess that scared me. Diane quickly found the fire extinguisher, putting out the smoldering flames. All was quiet. Diane was right beside me now. Gasping, she screamed. Following her line of vision, I stepped back in horror.
I covered my mouth staring at the two bodies. I was about to faint from the familiar scent of Russian soul. Adeline was badly burned and Errol was sitting up right with a long butcher knife through his chest. All the steel and dead. Oh god, this we need to call the police now! Not in my shaking fingers stumbling into my pocket, big pulling out my cell. 911? No, no, give it to me, dear. Let me. I handed her the phone. Soon after Diane dialed, she was rambling into the phone too fast for me to keep up. I look away, trying not to grow faint. There was nothing for me to do but wait. What? 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 Everyone was gathered in the dining hall. Antoine was talking to the police outside, while we were all gathered here away from the crime scene. Diane comforted me, wrapping me in her arms. A few times I was on the verge of tears. It was all too horrifying. Damien said alone, "Is back to us all. Although it was shaking, but I wasn't sure why. Candy sat not too far from us, quieting her own surprise. And Grace paced along the checkered floor back and forth with a troubled look harming his face. It wasn't long before the familiar echoes of footsteps reached the tiny hall. We look up to see Antoine all towards her. Towards us. So. Errol lost his sanity due to um, his depletion of blood. Attacking Adeline. We used a knife in self-defense against Errol. In her misfortune, misfortune, the oven exploded. Knocking her unconscious and burning her to death. While leaving the role bleeding to death with a knife in his chest. A tragic accident of two innocent lives. Or so the police report rules. His eyes narrowed, pointing an accusing look at Damien. You're all dismissed for today. Anton's footsteps echoed through as he left. None of us move. We all knew it wasn't an accident. Looking around the room, suspicion grew as we all exchanged accusing glances with one another. Someone here was a murderer. And that someone was here today at this cafe. But who? And why? I was still shaken, and the cold night air didn't help. At all. There was one person I wanted right now, and I was searching through my cell phone contacts for his name right now. Balin? Balin. Someone died, Balin. Like, the real deal. What's up? Did you finish your ship? Balin, shut up! Someone died. <laughs> no words came out of my mouth. Hello? Is this? Yeah. Yeah. My lips quivered and the tears only poured from my eyes out of control. Bell could probably hear my sniffling. This is what what's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. Don't be a crybaby, okay? It's 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 nothing, just something just scary. Take deep breaths. Take deep breaths. I can't understand you, is this? Just just keep breathing. I'm here, okay? I noticed. Though he couldn't see. You wanna come over? To talk about it? I really want to talk about it? Like, I just saw two co workers die. But I don't wanna meet your mom. Your mom is scary. I gotta go home, Balan. I just had a bad day at work. I should really go home. Okay. Ball? Yep. I go. Not sure how to say. I'm sorry, I. I lost your necklace. The gold harp. The gold harp necklace. 
I'm sorry. You're not crying over something like that, are you? No, it's, it's something else. Do you really care so much about it? Of course I do, man. Of course, I mean, you gave it to me. It was something for you. From a long moment, and I heard nothing. Well? Yeah, sorry. I, do you really care that much about it? You don't have to get me another one. No, I will. For you. But where did you even buy it? I... I didn't. A blonde sailed girl was selling them on the streets. It had your initials, so... There was a long moment of silence. Except for my sniffling. I'll find it. I promise. Is this? It, yeah? I love... Just breathe. And get home safely. Don't be afraid to call. He ain't come up. Wiping my eyes, I took a deep breath, calming down. Everything will be alright. After all, all's with me. I had a nightmare last night, a very scary one. I couldn't remember what it was about, but it left my chest with a heavy ache. Was about murder? Because that was not a dream. That was real. Like, really real. I was there. School ended and they gave me creepy music. I know where I needed to go. Oh, my eyes are bright. I know where I needed to go. But I really didn't want to go. Was it fear? Was it my covert eyes? No! It's like normal person would do! They just get murdered? It's it's okay? You're afraid because the murdered must have been some of your co-workers and that's all right? It's, it's totally normal that you don't want to go. You don't need to question that. Well, I couldn't run forever. You are very brave, ma'am! Jeez. Told you I wouldn't remember this. I told you I wouldn't remember this. Oh! Oh! Who would say? Alright, let's get in there. None of it made sense. Adeline and Earl were just two decent employees working at the cafe. They had no enemies at the cafe, so what would ever the murderer kill those two? Unless Danny Donald. What if the murderer didn't mean to kill those two? What if the stalker following the night before was related to this? What if the murderer was acting trying to kill me instead? I need to investigate. Actually, I am okay with you, Isis. I am okay with this right now. This this that you're thinking about. I, I am definitely okay. Chris! Come and talk to me! Oh I forgot I hated you! Alright, I forgot it. You know, I, I forget about it. I don't hate you. I love you. I still love you. I entered the empty room. Nobody was here and all was alone. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary except for the smell of something very oily. Isis. Hey, sorry. Was at the restroom. He walked over behind the bar. What can I do to help you? I was actually wondering, you know anything about yesterday's accident? You are a banter in your answer after all. Chris was in the middle of wiping a glass, breaking up his bro. Suddenly he started laughing. Playing detective now, are we? Well, I, I, I'm just trying to tell. Well, I'll tell you what I know. The last person Errol was seen with was Demia. They seemed to have a fight over some money issue. Yeah, I was there. If you ask me, this isn't the first time Demia got upset over his poker games. As for Adeline, well, I'm not sure what happened with her, although must have had another open mug function. Uh, that might have been the real accident. Alright then. Of course, Damien seems like this suspect. I don't think, even though Damien seems like a crazy vampire guy that who will do murder all the time, I don't think he killed him because he was. I, I don't know. I wouldn't expect from him. I really wouldn't. 
really never liked me, so what if you try to... As for following me, I am having my eyes on Damien and on Ant and, and Anton and the, the boss. I'm thinking of the boss and Damien because they are the most strange guys in this game. I should go as other people. Bye. Diane, I know you're innocent because you were with me at the time. Hi, Diane. Hello, dear. Her face was grim and gloomy. She was probably a still morning. Diane, where where were the other people during the accident? You were with me. Do you have any idea? I'm not sure. Aldo acted strangely. He was always in the kitchen. Yet yesterday, he was gone. Errol and uh, Errol was at Antoine's office, and was the kitchen connected to the cafe. Well. It's just so terrible. Those two were barely a century old. They had so much ahead of them. Those young vampires. Yeah. Okay. Let's look for other people. Yeah, Diane is not, like, couldn't tell me much because she, well, was with me. Damien, I hate you. I woke up to the stench. Hesitant. Damien's back was to me. There was a Strange stain on his vest. Wait, was it blood? Noticing my presence, he turned around. You know, <laughs> they are vampires. They, they, they manage blood as this is it was water, so he could always get like stained or something. Noticing my presence, he turned around. Hello. I only have one question. Where were you during yesterday kitchen accident? He stared at me appalled. You think I did it? Who else would? You obviously don't like me. True. I don't like you. But why in the world would you... <laughs> oh, so you think I was trying to kill you. <laughs> Do you know how self-centered you sound right now? Just answer my question. If anybody, you should be asking. If anybody, you should be asking Aldo that question. Aldo wasn't in the kitchen. HIS kitchen. When it happened. Damien shoot me a glare behold he turned tail and left. You win this time, Damien. But I'll have you later. Candice, talk to me. I opened the cafe door. The little blonde was outside whipping the tables. Of course, it will be very awkward, but I just have to ask. Meekly, I stepped over here. Is there anything you need? I was just wondering, on yesterday's accident, did you notice anything strange? Dear, where was she the time? No, not particular. Well, everybody was doing the usual. I was at the lobby, counting the cash. They probably didn't see me when I ducked down behind the glass, but after all, they left the kitchen, and now he went. He didn't come back for a few hours. And then Errol went to the kitchen a second time, probably talked to the boss. And but then Aldo came back in and he was holding this sort of bundle, like a small blanket bundle. What about Damien? She broke up her bros at my question. Damien's innocent. At least I'm I'm pretty sure. I didn't see him all day. I didn't see Diane or Chris either. But how can you be sure? I can't. Can just turn her back to me and not see you anymore. I should go ask some other people. Okay, so she saw Errol coming back in the kitchen. And then Aldo coming back to the kitchen. And Adeline was already in the kitchen by that time. Uh, couldn't be Damien. We already stated that. It couldn't be Diane. It couldn't be Chris. Well, I didn't see Chris. Where was Chris? Nobody! Don't! Uh, uh, no one told me where Chris was. Not even Chris. Could be Chris. But that would make me hate him, so I'm gonna say no. And could be Aldo. I should talk with Aldo last. He might have given me to do that will take off my area opportunity and time in my kitchen. What? I already talked to everybody else. Okay. 
Aloo was where he usually was, and the bloody scene from yesterday gone. Clean up a spotless. Loram, Miss Izzy's. Hello, Aldo. The silence was really awkward. Everybody thinks it's my fault. It, I'm. I I really don't think you are the murderer, Aldo. I really don't want to think you are the murderer. You're such a kind guy. You'd help me so much. You give me those stupid mini games, but you're not a bad guy. Looking at this face, I couldn't see no trace of ill intent of any kind. You didn't kill anybody, Aldo. But what? I don't see what you could have gained. You're just an honest chef, passionate about his passion cuisine. Returning to his old self, Aldo grinned, ruffling my hair. He pat my shoulder, like a heavy burden was left from him. Still, I couldn't help but feel he was saying something. Ah, let's just forget about it. We just sub cuisines today. Can only for the night. Can only. Yes, yes! Now quick before the queen goes bad. We must bake. Uh, it's not for a minigame. Although I, I just, you are the you are the murderer. Drag ingredients in the correct order to the bowl. <sighs> why, Aldo? Why? Why? Why do you have to do this? All right, so I'll guess this is the first one. That is the first one. This is the first one. That is the first one. That is the first one. And then this is the first one. This is the second one. Oh, come on, no, 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 make it stop, make it stop, make it stop. You gotta be kidding me, you gotta be kidding me. No, 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 no. I hate these ones. I hate when we have to get mixed stuff because it's just lag. Lag all the way. Not gonna make it. I'm so used to it, it, it just doesn't affect me anymore. Click the door. Okay. I can make this. Oh, sorry. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come. There you go. It's perfect. It doesn't have like. <laughs> it doesn't have what cream and those white stuff and all everything. But it's good. Solve the math problem. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. I'm not gonna be able to do this. Solve the math problem, enter the answer, interpret it, and uh, okay. 200, 300. Ah, I didn't click the power button! Ah, oh, no! What am I doing here? What am I doing here? I'm gonna fail. That was that went horrible. Seriously. <sighs> all right. Let's do this all over again. This is gonna be fine. Ha! Take that, Aldo, in your Italian face. Before I knew it, work ended. The, the just night was postponed for a few days later. Nothing other than the usual happened. I was just about to leave from home when a familiar figure turned around the corner. Balling! Yeah, of course. Ball! Hey there. He smiled, taking my hand. You wanna stay over for a bit before you go? Know? Or you go? That sounds great. Yay! I closed my bedroom door behind us. It'll be nice to hang out with Balling again. We rarely do. You gotta help me with this calculus crap. I swear I'm gonna fail again. Spreading ourselves onto the floor, I tutored Balan for the next hour or two. Yay! So you understand now? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Isis. By now, we were both plopped on my bed. Homework was finished. And we had nothing to do other than chat. I'm thirsty. Oh, I'll go with water. No, stay, please. He thought on my sleeve. Oh, you're not thirsty for water, are you? I'm like not sure what he was talking about. Well, his eyes lowered. Yeah, you're not thirsty for water. 
Paul leaned down, moving himself closer to me. I gasped and arm my back as he licked my neck. Yeah, Bulk, what are you? Trust me. I just, I just hope he doesn't kill Isis. Could he not hear the pulsing crescent in my veins? My neck burned. His nose nuzzled against my skin, and his breath came in slowly. Exhaling at the base of my neck, falling lower my body down into the bed. Don't move. How could I? My body shivered. I couldn't concentrate on anything except for the hot breath on my skin and the fingers brushing against my neck, tapping me underneath him. How could I have given in so easily? Because it's your friend. It's like, you still trusting him even though this kind of situation. You smell so sweet. He said, murmuring into my ear. Not able to form any articulate sil syllable, sil syllable, sorry, syllable, I could only watch as he pressed his nose into my skin, taking in my scent. At last, he opened his jaw. I could see the glint of his fangs from the moonlight. This is... Ugh, that sounded gross. I flinched at the sudden pain. He pierced my flesh, sinking his two sharp fangs into me. I could feel something spread in my neck, calming my adrenaline and replacing it with a feeling of high ecstasy. I wanted more. Alright, this is getting weird. At my words, Balin grabbed my hand. He indulged himself, lifting on my neck with his other hand. Oh, it is like, it is like, he just keep, like, like, grabbing more and more, and it's like she doesn't care, because, yeah. I could feel the tip of his touch, bruised slightly against my skin. A familiar stain of rust rusting salt reached my nostrils, but there was diminished by the sweet feeling of bliss beneath my skin. I was losing strength from the blood loss. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I tried to explain. Not that I care at the moment. Yeah, that's what I tried to explain. <laughs> I slowly felt my consciousness leave me as I was enveloped in the black euphoria. Uh, you're so stupid, Valen. Is this? Is this? Oh God! I'm so sorry. Please, please wake up, please. Everything looks so blurry, so dark. Eventually, the color came back to to my vision. So did the light. Oh, thank God you were me sick, is this? <laughs> Whose fault do you think this is? I was on in the bed, drained, literally. Whoa, what happened? I, I, I drank too much. I'm sorry. There was a funny taste in my mouth. A familiar taste of medicine. Did you give me... Yeah, I, I gave you some of your pills. Yes, that's right. The medication prescription medicine I ate whatever I had on a minute talks of hypoglucemia. Wait, pollen? Yeah. Where did you get those pills? His face froze. The only place I got those pills with either that hospital or the nurse's office. Only the doctor or the nurse had them. How, how did you get those pills? Paul gulp. He looked away a in my face. I should go home. Scrambling on my bedroom door, he grabbed his homeware and backpack. Without giving me enough time to say goodbye, he left on my door. So, vampires took the spills too. Just, just when they have this thirst for blood, they get anemic or something. So they should be able to like drink those things, uh, eat those this kind of medicine. So they go like dying and blah, blah, blah. yeah. I sat on my bed, reminded me. I had so many questions in my head unanswered. It left me frustrated and miserable. Is this? There was a knock on my door. He was that. Oh God, that no, no, this is not the moment. Yeah, come to the living room. We like to speak with you. Are oh, you gonna tell me I'm a vampire? Is that it? That I'm okay with it. Mom and Dad sat on the living room couch. Their faces stoic and cold. We quit. What? What? What do you mean? You quit your jobs? It's been sixteen years, and we're done. We're sending you back to the woman. But what were you really talking about? I didn't understand. You know, you're adopted. And we've been spent enough years raising you. It's not worth the money anymore, and my wife and I want our lives back. What are you talking about? You know you're not normal. That's why we're sending you back. You're not us. And frankly, we have enough playing your pronouns now. What are you talking about? What do you mean I'm like, like you? What, what am I? 
Mom and Dad exchange glances. Sign that respond. We don't know. Silence filled the gravity to the room of the situation. Were they really doing this to me? Yeah! They have been like assholes all the whole story. They are horrible parents. I couldn't understand. And you couldn't find it in your heart to love me as your own child despite, despite being adopted? Despite being different? The girl was painting clearly on her face, but it was overshadowed by something. By fear. They weren't sorry for me. They were sorry for themselves. In a few days, I'll you'll be moving out. The woman will take you back into her into her care. What woman? You'll know soon enough. I looked down, trying to take it all, but failing. May I be excused to go to my room? Yes, we're finished saying what we have to say. Start packing soon. God, 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 God. Come on! I locked the door behind me. Alone, I ran to my bed. I cried silent tears. Please, this is being an iron Oh no, it's all real. But no matter how much I wished, I couldn't wake up from this horrible reality. As Fadig finally took me on her, I, I cried myself to sleep. God! So much things to get into! First, I lost the necklace, then it's murder, and then it's just. just my parents throwing me away. My parents throwing me away is not really a thing that. Well, I am glad that they are throwing me away because they are like worst parents ever and I hate them so much. But I guess it was bad for Isis and it really struck her that she was adopted and all that weird stuff that's happening. And yeah, she's still, she's still thinking about someone who tried to kill her. She's still thinking what. Balin had those pills. Yeah, it's just, wow, his life is horrible actually. She should, she should be. She's okay. It's okay to cry. Seriously, her life is horrible. Okay, so this was Cafero episode five. I guess I'll see you in episode six. Yeah. Okay. See. You.